All right, if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. And if you want to start with me, I'll just read one verse in Matthew 12. Matthew 12. Father, thank you for the night. God, I do thank you for just the time that we have to study your word. And God, I pray you be with this Bible study. Uh, God, just be with those who are out in these elements, the workers, the homeless, and uh, Lord, the senior adults too. God, just watch over them. Uh, God, thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for Wednesday night Bible study and prayer meeting. And God, I just thank you so much for what you're doing in the life of our church. God, I pray that uh, we'll just continue to keep our eyes on you and all we do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, tonight, if you ha haven't got a worksheet, you can still get one. Lonnie's back there. If you just raise your hand, he don't, he don't mind coming. Okay, up here, towards the front. Worksheet or a prayer list? Dole's got the prayer list if you need that. All right, tonight we're talking about the importance of unity. The importance of unity. Uh, I've had this one just on my mind for really about two months. And uh, just last week... Uh, developed it, and uh, I just, uh, I really like the way it's turned out and uh, the lesson that we need to learn. Uh, because folks, I want to tell you this, Satan does not like what's going on in our church, okay? And he's going to do anything he can to stop the flow of the Spirit and to make, uh, just cause havoc in our church. But uh, praise God, the Bible says, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And the outline is, number one, the character of unity. The character of unity. Number two, the oneness. The oneness of unity. Seven things here in that part that has to deal with one. And number three, the gifts of unity. Why do we have Spiritual gifts, it's so that we, that we can use them for God's glory. And I want to say right off the bat, the opposite of unity is division. The opposite of unity is division. And folks, uh, in any organization, it's important that we're all on the same page, all right, and there's not any division. Uh, whether, and folks, I don't care what occupation you have. It not just only applies to the church, it, it applies to everything that you do. Your organization or your business cannot be as effective as it should be if there's division in your organization. Matter of fact, Matthew 12, Matthew 12, verse 25, And Jesus knew their thoughts and said to them, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and every city or house divided against itself will not stand. So Jesus himself said, uh, uh, being divided will destroy many things. Okay? Desolation means just destroyed. And then he said, a uh, city or a house, and I will say this, uh, a church, a church divided, uh, will not stand. So we need to keep this in mind. Uh, and again, I'm not I'm not saying our, our church is divided. Uh, I, I don't think it is. You know, we're not a perfect church, you know, uh, but I, I, just, I just feel like uh, I need to share this at this time. So let's look at the character of unity. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, and really prisoner, he calls himself that, uh, you know, uh, and he was a prisoner, towards the end of his life, but it's also, uh, the word is bond slave, okay? We are under the authority of Jesus Christ. We are under the authority of God. And then he lists seven characteristics here, all right? Seven characteristics here of unity, the character of unity. Uh, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling which you were called, all right? And Again, we're not perfect. Uh, nobody has arrived spiritually. 
Nobody can say, you know, they went a week without sinning. All right, you, you are not Jesus. <laughs> we are human. But there are certain uh, characteristics that we need to show in our lives. Okay, we don't need to shame the name of Christ. That's what walk worthy means. All right, it's that if, uh, you know, somebody uh, watched you for, let's say, five or more minutes in any setting, they would understand real quickly that you are a Christian, that you are a believer, that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. And then this is the characteristics of unity with which you're called with all lowliness. And we know what that is. That's humble. All right? We all need humility in our lives. Uh, you know, most people do not like arrogant people. Most people do not enjoy being around people that brag on themselves. Most people... You know, as far as that goes in, in, in our Christian walk, uh, I mean, Jesus was humble. And uh, we know uh, Philippians 2. I'm going to share that with you in a little bit. And then it says also gentleness. Okay? Uh, you know, gentleness is meekness. But meekness is not weakness, folks. All right? Some people think if you're gentle or meek that you're weak. And, and you really aren't. Gentleness is just being kind to people. All right? Being kind to people, you know, getting, getting along with people, you know, trying to mend fences and, and trying to uh, just, uh, uh, you know, help people out and help them to understand. It's not blowing up. It's, it's not, you know, it, you know, having to win an argument. Because, you know, I, I've heard this saying, and it's true, folks, you can win an argument and lose a friend, all right? And, and, Things like that, it, it's just not good. With long-suffering, impatience is the word we don't like. Uh, because I, I really have, through all this, I, I really think one of the things the Lord has tried to teach me is patience. Uh, I don't like to stand in lines. I don't like to wait for things. All right? And we all have issues of patience. Uh, but when it comes to unity, we need to be patient with others. Bearing one another. And bearing simply means not just tolerating, okay? Bearing is trying to get along. Even if, and, and again, I want to say this, unity is not uniformity, okay? We may not all be on the same page, or even we may not all believe the same thing, or we may not, and again, I'm not talking about doctrine here. I'm just saying much of our belief systems and the way we act is how we were raised, Okay? how we were raised. And a lot of times, different people are just raised different ways, and sometimes that clashes. In bearing one another, the, the word that comes to me is giving someone the benefit of the doubt. Okay? Not always being skeptical. Not arg always being argumentative. All right? Bearing one another in love. And folks, I am telling you, love produces unity. Okay? Love produces unity. And, and even the, the Word of God tells us, you know, that love covers a multitude of sin. So that is the fifth characteristic of unity. And then the next one, uh, uh, fifth, the next one, endeavoring, endeavoring to keep uh, the unity in the spirit and the bond of peace. All right, endeavoring means uh, taking, taking it on. Endeavoring means to find a way, find middle ground. And, and again, I'm not, I'm not talking about compromising, you know, doctrine and biblical truths, okay? It's just meaning, all right, that sometimes people see things uh, from a different point of view. It's kind of like, you know, the example I've heard all my life, you know, if three blind men went up to an elephant and, and touched it in a different place, they would give you a different description of what that, they do the trunk and they could do the side. It, it's two totally different things. And sometimes, you know, we may even be saying the same thing, but, but not clicking in that. So uh, endeavoring takes initiation on your part. And the, the seventh one is peace. And folks, we all need peace in our lives. Folks, our world is messed up. It's messed up enough, okay? It's terrible. There's such hate and there's such violence in our world, all right? And, 
you know, and I'm not talking about the peace of the 60s. You know, I grew up, you know, in the 60s. And, you know, there were just certain things, you know, going on there. I, as a kid, I just shook my head, you know, and, and really I was sheltered a lot. I uh, did not see that until I became a teenager. But the peace is the peace of God that passes all understanding. Folks, who doesn't want peace? Okay? Well, I'll tell you, <laughs> Satan, <laughs> Satan wants chaos. Satan wants hate. Satan wants division. But we can have the peace of God in our lives. James chapter 3, go with me to James 3. James 3, verse 13. James 3.13, who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Notice the word we've already used. Gentleness is meekness and wisdom. And, you know, there's all kinds of definitions of wisdom, but wisdom is basically knowing the word of God and knowing the mind of God and doing it. Okay, you can know it, but if you don't do it, if you don't obey, you are not wise. But if you have bitter envy, self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. And folks, I'm telling you, uh, self-seeking is these people that want to have it their way. They don't care who they hurt. They don't care what they say. They don't care, you know, you know, uh, the, the damage, the things done. There are self-seeking people that you will be around and you have to deal with. Do not boast uh, and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but it is earthly, sensual, and demonic. And I'm telling you, James, he's a straight shooter. You cannot read the book of James without realizing he don't mess around. He's that old preacher that just clears him off a spot. He gets, he gets the yelling and hollering and, and carrying on and thumping the, you know, his Bible and doing that. But sometimes we have to do that to get people's attention. So these words, none of these words are good. Earthly means worldly, sensual. Uh, again, lusts uh, uh, and demonic. Christians should be as far from demonic activities uh, as possible. And folks, the deal with, with losing your temper, and I've seen it, I've seen it in churches, I've seen it in individuals, to where I, we, we had a staff member at, well, I'm not going to say. I almost said too much. Not here. Okay. I'll, I, I, anyway, when this person got mad, you could literally see the red on their face start right here and just go up. Okay. And I would always say, You're mad. No, I'm not. You know? and, and what I'm saying is, it helps nothing when we get angry about things. All right, absolutely nothing. All right, so he's saying this is not good. Verse 16, where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and evil things are there. Who is the author of confusion according to the Word of God? It's Satan, folks. It's Satan. He does not want Christians united and in one accord. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure. Okay, pure. Think of pure, how about pure water? Things that are pure. Think about even God and Jesus. They're pure, they're holy, okay? And then it says, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy. What do you, what do you find in here? The fruits of the Spirit, okay? We need the fruits of the Spirit in our lives without partiality, okay? That means no favorites, Okay, treat everybody the same. Doesn't matter who they are. Doesn't matter what they make. Doesn't matter the influence they have. And without hypocrisy. And man, Jesus got all over the Pharisees because of hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Oh folks, we can, we can always come to uh, terms. We can always uh, talk things out. Uh, we can always just get in a room and just say, hey, you know, if there are two Christian people, all right, we, we ought to be able to work that out. And I didn't even write down this, but Matthew chapter 18, folks, it's clear there is a guideline on what we need to do 
when we get in the outs with people. So remember that, Matthew uh, chapter 18. Second thing is the oneness of unity. Look back in Ephesians. There is one body. One body. And by the way, oneness is teamwork. Oneness is cooperation. Oneness is like-mindedness. It's not that we all think alike, because we don't. All right? What really may bug somebody, you know, other people, you know, it's not a big deal to them. All right? So, so understand oneness is, is togetherness. All right? Then it says there is one body, and of course we know that is the church. All right? The church. The church. Folks, uh, and again, you can go with the local church, which is Rye Hill Baptist Church, but there's also one body in Christ Jesus. That's all the believers of all times. There's one Spirit, and we know that is the Holy Spirit. But folks, and I'm telling you, we need to depend on the Holy Spirit when it comes to getting along and, and making peace. We must follow not our feelings. So many times people wear their feelings on their sleeves. Uh, so many times people express their feelings, and their emotions. And I'm not saying it's wrong to do that, but it's, it's being in control of those things, and they're very, very important. Just as you were called to one hope of your calling. What is hope? Hope is the future. What is the hope? Man, it's Jesus Christ. What are we talking about on Sundays? We're talking about Revelation. We have hope in Jesus Christ. And folks, I believe with all my heart, Jesus is coming again. One Lord, one Lord, and that Lord is Jesus Christ. He is Savior and He is Lord. One faith, faith is everything to us, folks. How are we saved? By faith. We are saved by faith. And faith is so important uh, to the Christian. One baptism, one baptism. And this, this kind of threw me at first when I first thought about it, because I almost think there's two baptisms, all right? And I'm just going to express my opinion of it. I'm not saying the Bible's wrong in any stretch, all right? The writer probably had one thing in mind, but if you think there's baptism of the Holy Spirit, when you get saved, you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then when you follow the Lord in baptism, there's water baptism, all right? So again, how you interpret that is up to you, but one baptism one God, and we know that is Jehovah God of this Bible, who is Father of all, who is above all. We know He is a Lord, He is King, He is all that, and through all and in you all. And folks, uh, you know, when we talk about in you all, that's, that's what should uh, show peace. That should show uh, being able to get along, that should show, uh, because because you think about it, even Jesus quoted this many times in the Gospels. What did he say about him and his Father? We are one. We are one. If you've seen him, you've seen me. And folks, we ought to emulate that in our own lives. We need to be one with Jesus Christ. We need to be one with God the Father. We need to be in tune with the Holy Spirit. And so we see the oneness of of unity. Philippians 2. Philippians 2. Philippians 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Jesus Christ, who being the, in the form of God, did not consider it to be rob, robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and taking the form of a bondservant. See, the very thing that the Apostle Paul said Jesus was. That's probably where the Apostle Paul got it, all right? I'm a slave. I come under the authority. I don't do anything without him. And coming in the likeness of men, he was 100% man, 100% God, and being found in appearance as a man, look at this, he humbled himself. Folks, I believe we are most like Jesus when we practice humility, okay? And there are times it's hard to do. It really is. There are times when we are better not saying anything is to say the wrong thing. Jesus himself was in flesh and never sinned. 
He chose not to sin. He humbled himself. He was God's servant here on earth. And it says, and became obedient to the point of death, even the death on the cross. And folks, I'm just telling you, that is the ultimate sacrifice. And we know it brought salvation uh, to the world. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and give him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, uh, those in heaven, those on earth, those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. So we see Jesus' perfect example of unity and oneness. So we see the character of unity, that we see the oneness of unity, and the gifts of unity. And again, look down in verse 11. Verse 11, And he gave, and he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and some teachers. You know, some people call these the five uh, speaking gifts, but you have to understand, uh, you know, what these people were about, all right? These are the teachers, okay? These are the ones, uh, many, that says, thus saith the Lord. And when we think about apostles, there was a difference between an apostle and a disciple. A disciple was a follower of Christ. Apostle was uh, the 12, and they had the, that special gift, that apostolic gift that God gave them and that Jesus gave them, that when the gospel first came, when that first Acts chapter 2, all right, that, that was talking the miracles. When Peter came up to the blind man and said, silver and gold have I none, but in the name of Jesus Christ, get up and walk. That is a form of apostleship, okay? And some prophets, and prophets are just preachers. And folks, there's a difference between a preacher and a teacher, okay? And, and again, uh, the preacher, uh, he sees things uh, more as black and white. The preacher... You know, you know they, uh, they, most of the time, their voice tones, they, they go up and down. They, they get louder for emphasis. Uh, you know, preachers, you know, somehow just, that's, that's just what, I'm, I mean, if somebody asked me, are you going to retire and do something else? I don't know what else I would do. I, you know, I've been preaching, literally, I've been preaching. I started as a youth minister 40, 42 years. So I'm not going to sell cars, <laughs> you know, that ain't going to work. I'm sure not going to go to a factory. You know, you got you to gotta have that factory mind. And there's nothing wrong with factory work. I, I'm, not, I'm not putting that in negative in any way. I'm simply saying the bottom line, what I'm trying to say, it just came to me. Preachers got to preach, okay? Preachers have to preach. Some evangelists, and we know that evangelists, uh, they are extremely evangelistic in all that we do. Uh, I'm looking at two men out here that have the gift of evangelism. Uh, Brother Scott is one. That man can turn any conversation into a gospel presentation. All right, he is. I've only met three personally in my life that I've been around. You know, you can name people online and all that, but in every church, it's just kind of weird how God's done it. There was one person in that church that was an evangelist. And these folks thrive on souls. These folks, when they start, when they start a gospel, like we, we had 22 teams going out at Cameron Baptist Church in London, and there's one lady that I'm telling you, when we had a semester of evangelism explosion, it was rare that she didn't, I mean, present the gospel. Every Tuesday night we'd go out, and that lady, she, she had somebody that she led to the Lord. And of course, I'm talking about Bakri is the other one. Hey, look at the slides, folks. Look at the lines of people ready to be baptized. Okay, that's the gift of evangelism. And it says, and, and pastors, and pastors are more like shepherds. Okay, some pastors are, uh, uh, some pastors uh, are uh, what I call preachers. But that, that is a rare thing. Usually you're either a pastor or you're a preacher. Okay, But both of them are very, very much needed uh, in what we do. And then also teachers. Okay, teachers. 
Uh, there's teachers uh, in the Bible that, that just were very, very good teachers, and uh, they love to study. Uh, man, they like details. Uh, they, they did all these things. And you say, well, Mike, why are you bringing up the gifts? Because if we're not uh, careful, we could either envy or be operating in an area that is not our gifts. Okay, and we are not going to be as effective if we don't operate in the area that God... See, the Bible says God places us in that gift inside of us. And folks, we should not... When it comes to spiritual gifts, I'm just telling you, everybody in the church that is saved has a spiritual gift. Everybody is supposed to be, this is what the Word says, using their spiritual gift what? For the glory of God. Not to say, hey, I won five people to the Lord last week. Well, I'm glad you did. I really am. But, but there, you know, there's, there should not be any boasting about it. Uh, we should all, we all have things that we do and we do well. And if we are all operating within that spiritual gift, I'm telling you, it's like a machine. It's like a machine. And now look at verse 12, for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. So what I was it saying? Folks, we all can be involved in ministry. Everyone, every member that we have that is a Christian can do something for the Lord. Some ministry that they can do and find fulfillment in that. For the edifying of the body of Christ, that's for the church, Till we all come into the unity of the faith and the acknowledge, uh, end of the knowledge of the Son of God to a perfect man to the measure and the stature of the fullness of Christ. And again, perfect is not sinless. Okay? Folks, there's many times <laughs> I have to say, I mean, Monday morning, first thing that was on my mind, I was in my prayer time, I had to call a church member and tell them I was sorry. Okay, and don't try to figure out who it is, all right? It was just in my prayer time. I said something that probably just, it wasn't bad. I wasn't mean. I was just teasing. But the Holy Spirit told me, you didn't need to say that. Okay, and that's what I'm saying. Nobody's perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. But if we are in unity with the Holy Spirit guiding us, I'm just telling you, we will be like a well old machine. Well, oh, Acts 2. Acts 2. I'm running out of time here. Acts 2. Verse 42. And you have to understand, those who received the word, if 41 were baptized, 3,000 souls were added to the church. 3,000. You think we have an education problem. You think we don't have enough room I mean, 3,000 souls. And what was that? That was the Holy Spirit. That was God saying, you know what? I'm going to start my church. And folks, I hope you understand how blessed we are. How blessed we are. This calendar year, we have had 72 people join our church. 72. And I'm saying, folks, we need to make sure we will not do anything to mess that up. And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. Doctrine's important. Fellowship is important. Breaking of bread. Uh, again, you know, fellowship, but also breaking of bread could be the Lord's Supper. In prayers, folks, we need to be, and, and I do think we are a praying church, but if you come into a difficult situation, and begin things in prayer. Prayer, bathe it. I like the word bathe it in prayer. And then it says, Then fear came upon every soul, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. Now all who believed were together. Notice that word, together. That's oneness. And had all things in common, and sold their possessions and goods, and divided them among all as anyone who had need. What is that? Just helping out one another. That's what I love about our church. I'm telling you, our small group times, our Sunday schools, man, when someone's down, man, they start, 
you know, prayer change. Uh, they start bringing food when somebody's sick and down. They, they just bring food over. And, you know, even, you know, I've heard even people that have been sick, is they just fill my refrigerator up. Somebody, I couldn't do that. Somebody mowed my grass. I come, back, I come home from a doctor's appointment. This is things that I have heard. And my, my yard was done. That's what needs and took care of one of other's needs. And it says, so, conti so continuing daily in one accord, there's that word, one accord, in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house, they ate their food with gladness and simplicity of heart. Folks, it's not hard. Living the Christian life, I know it's a challenge, but it's simple. Trust God and love people. Trust God. Trust God and love people. Praising God and having favor with all the people. Good reputation is, it goes a long ways. And the Lord added to the church daily those who are being saved. My well, folks, I just tell you, I just want the, the love of God and the Holy Spirit just to flow out uh, in every service that we have. I just, uh, I was talking to one of our visitors this week and they said, uh, you know, we have come three times and on three occasions uh, somebody came down the aisle and they came this past Sunday <laughs> and they just said it was amazing to see. And folks, that is God. That is church. That is being united in one accord. In the last scripture, Matthew chapter 16. Matthew 16. Verse 18. Matthew 16, 18. And we know this is the where Jesus just looked Peter in the eye basically and he says, well, who do you say I am? And he made a statement of faith. Thou art Christ, the Son of of the living God. Then Jesus goes on to say in verse 18, and I also say to you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And the gates of Hades, or hell, shall not prevail against it. Now folks, God will defend a unified church. Okay? God will defend. God is on our side. He is our refuge. He is our strength. He is everything to us. Father, thank you for this day and just thank you for what you're doing. And again, I, I am not implying our church is divided. It's just a warning. It's just we need to watch out. We need to be ready. Your word tells us to be ready. And God, I pray that we would be uh, peace seekers, Lord. I pray that, Lord, uh, we would give people the benefit of the doubt and God, I pray that you just put a hedge of protection around our church. God, we just want to praise you. We just want to thank you for what you're doing. And God, I just pray, I, I really do, I hurt for the churches that are divided, and I just hurt for churches who are hurting. And God, I just pray that we would just stay right in the middle of your will and that we would seek you with all of our hearts, our souls, and our minds. And God, we just thank you that uh, you're here and Lord, we're going to have the baptismal waters moving again uh, Sunday and I've already had a couple that has said that they're going to join Sunday and God, it's you, God. I pray we never take that for granted and God, I just thank you that uh, we are a loving church. We are a unified church. So God, protect us and uh, be, be with those who are hurting and God, I pray you minister to them and Lord, just thank you for this time that we have tonight. And God, most of all, I want to thank you for your word. Your word is truth, it is yes, and it is amen. So God, I pray that you just help us to continue to be the church that you want us to be. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.